Hey, uh, who are you? How long have you been playing Altered, and what did you play today? Uh, my name is Spain. Um, I've been playing Altered like, I don't know, two and a half weeks maybe. Uh, my good friend Trickster, who you probably know because you're watching his video, hit me up. The tournament was right here, about 25 minutes from my home city. Uh, so we just made arrangements kind of on a whim to go to the event together. Uh, just for my practice with him, I chose to play Traced and Rossum today. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with how it performed. It was pretty consistent with what I saw during testing, um, and it pretty much achieved everything that I sought to do today. What matchups did you feel good about for Traced, and yeah, what was your record today? Uh, so I went 4-2, and two. I ended up in, I think it was like 10th place overall in the bracket. Um, honestly, I built the deck around the fact that I feel good against everything that's not Waru. Pretty much my strategy was to completely demolish any deck that's not Waru, and maybe, hopefully, just clutch one of the Waru games to end up in top cut. Ended up a little bit short of the latter half of that goal, but other than that, I didn't drop a single game today, so it was pretty consistent with what I expected. Um, during my testing, I just did stuff like VGA online, and I held like a 94% win rate over just two nights of grinding. Uh, I pushed up to rank two on the ladder on VGA playing Arena. Um, I think Trace is maybe not underrated, but with Waru being so prevalent right now, I think Trace kind of flew under the radar. If we ever saw like balance changes to Waru and Mac, for example, I think Trace is primed to just be the dominant deck. Yeah, I'm really interested in this deck list that's been able to do so well into all the other heroes. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at your card choices. So obviously, the most important card you're going to be playing in Trace is just going to be your Haven, the Bravos Bastion. Uh, if you've ever played against it, you know exactly what's going on with this permanent. You're resupplying when it comes down, so it's supporting your condition with Traced and Rossum, and then you're going to boost anything that comes out of your reserve. Uh, it all meshes together really well. This is what really gives the deck some power and some staying power on the board. Uh, so as you're just tunneling out these cards fueled by your draw, your board presence can be really terrifying. This is just supported by a lot of cheap units that kind of play into that same idea. So you see things like the Foundry Mechanic, which can also be discarded to give it a uh, discount. Things like Amelia, which when they go straight into your reserve or they're placed in reserve, being played out for one cost. If you have one Haven, it's a one cost, but three in every uh, you know every region. Two Havens, it just becomes absolutely horrifying. Um, really, I mean, if you get two Havens online in a game, unless you've really severely lost, uh, it's just oppressive. Throughout all my games today, I didn't drop a single game other than to Waru. So if you're having doubts about the deck, if we do see balance changes, or you feel good about your personal warrior matchup, I think it's worth considering. It's a little bit different. Ultimately, right now, with 39 cards needed for a deck and only one set out, not every single card fits the win condition necessarily, but Tinkerbell is a pretty well-statted body uh, with the sabotage effect. It's great in the mirrors. It's really great in every matchup, just denying your opponent resources. And then back... On that line of putting things in your reserve, the Keylon Elemental, very fair static card. Putting things into your reserve, though, to serve the Trace and Rossum win condition and get Haven boosts. I'm also just running the common Copelia. Copelia is interesting. It never really feels super awesome. It, you do get to play it asleep for free, which can be really good on the next turn. But I think you often have hands where Copelia feels like it's just a weight in your hand. And you're kind of saving it to play for free, but it's not really good enough to play out just at a fair value. I do think in future sets, Copelia is a very replaceable card, but it serves interesting win conditions in the deck right now. It's definitely not your weakest card. It's a little ironic because I chose to run three. Gion is probably one of your weakest cards in the deck. Um, I tailored my deck to specifically just be good at what it does rather than trying to beat Waru. I think the reality of playing Trace and Rossum is accepting that Waru is your worst matchup and you're going to have a bad time. Um, you know, I took one game against Waru's all day. A lot of them were close and maybe could have swung with different draws and everything, but it was mostly with an expectation. Um, you don't really bring Trace to beat Waru, you bring Trace to bring everything else, and Jian kind of serves that condition. 3 2 0 is nothing insane, but especially with boost going on. It does what you want to do pretty effectively, especially just being another cheap body. 
He's especially great in your opening hand. A lot of more inexperienced warriors are just going to play out like a three cost bureaucrat and put it to sleep on turn one. So you look to exploit that, you're going to play one of your good two cost bodies here and then just another one cost on turn one. Take two expeditions, then you're in a good spot to set up a haven, start getting your boosts and your scrap counters rolling. The Martingale was kind of a last minute inclusion when I was just trying to find 39 cards that help each other out. Through most of my games, I actually ended up putting this into mana. I didn't find many opportunities where this card did well. As a rare slot, I don't think I'm likely to run it again. It is worth considering though, especially the potential to discount to get around some of the Robin Hood shenanigans if you're still facing that in the future. It's worth looking into further, but from my experience today, it never did anything impressive for me. Going further into my rares, Ada Lovelace. It's kind of intuitively obvious just based on what this deck is doing. Once it comes out of reserve, you get to put another thing in reserve and draw a card. It's keeping your fuel going. Since we're boosting up the bodies on these cheap units, then the boosts will apply more times to more cheap units. Just fueling your hand constantly is one of the best ways to support this build. And the Absolute King, the most pivotal card besides Haven towards that win condition is Dr. Frankenstein. Um, this card comes out of reserve for two cost with already a 3-3-3 body, kind of similar to Amelia and how it's overstatted when played from reserve. On top of that, though, he's refueling, he's hitting your Haven, giving you a bunch of power and more fuel from there. The rare Izmir Stargazer is just another really strong one-cost body. This is really good against Sigismar in particular, or any Ordis that's playing those 1-1-1 one, one, one tokens pretty often. This is a really good card to win you an expedition for free. If someone plays out a unit and you can get over it with one of your good two-cost cards, and then get over the token for free, with this body. That's a really, really strong start to your game. Were my uniques any different? The Axiom Salvager is one of the cards I'm most likely to increase to three rares. This card is really good. Um, the stat line is really underwhelming. I never feel like I'm dropping down a powerhouse when I play this guy, but the resupply effect is invaluable. Um, he's a one cost. Your one costs don't need to be super well statted to win expeditions in most cases and he's resupplying and replacing himself and moving your scrap counters and activating your haven and everything, this guy really kind of overperforms. Um, so if you were uh, not running like a unique salvager, would you probably put that in instead of the Martingale? Definitely, yeah. Martingale, honestly, in all of my games today, Martingale just felt like a worse Axiom salvager. I really think it just comes down to the resupply. There is some potential value in the discount, but thinking back... Before you get your five scrap counters, especially if you get hit with like a bad sabotage or something, the deck can just be dead in the water. What about like the rare uh, Lyric Chronicler? Do you think that's something you would consider or how, do you, how have you felt about that? It's most likely not a card to consider, honestly. I actually played, I believe it was two copies of the rare Lyric Chronicler in one of my first iterations of this deck. That card never feels good. Um, there is a case for the stat line to be pretty powerful and for the resupply to help you get traced online, but in all of my experience testing, it always felt too clunky. It was never one of the preferable cards to put directly into reserve with traced online. Um, and it always felt just a little bit too slow to actually play out from hand to then get the full reserve effect. I don't think that's a card I'm really strongly considering anymore. Okay. Lastly, for my non-uniques, I only ran three spells in this build, which, as I've been looking at some of the other Trace and Rossum decks today, I think is becoming less common. I think a, what I consider to be a blunder of some of the other Trace players is that they wanted to tech their deck really strongly against Waru, and it was something I tried in testing as well, like including Booms, including the spell Hooked, just to move units. I do think there's some potential to disrupt Waru with those abilities, but you're better off playing to the deck's strengths and not relying on sometimes having the perfect answer. Even in your best case, if you could land, you know, a boom with the cheap units to kill a Robin Hood, you've invested, you know, maybe six mana into removing a four cost. It does discard entirely, but I could never get that card to feel good. I think your best bet is to play to the strengths of your deck. You can beat Robin Hood even with a list built 
not around beating Waru or beating Robin Hood. And my games went a little bit differently today. Uh, I definitely would have achieved that. I think your best bet is to kind of oppress the other decks that aren't Waru and Mech and, you know, play to your odds and have a little bit of good luck against Waru and Mech. Yeah, that makes sense. I feel like when I play Trace, since you have the resupply, oftentimes if you hit like one of those tech cards in a bad, in like in a matchup where it doesn't help you, it can just be uh, pretty dead or like that would be something you were like relying on being able to use and then it's like an unplayable. Exactly. And even, even running Keylon Burst today, Keylon Burst is the best removal spell out of all the options you have in Traced. Um, it's perfectly you know, cost and value aligned to remove Robin Hood and a lot of the problematic cards from War and Mac. Even so, there are so many games I played today where I had a Keylon Burst in my reserve or my hand, and it did nothing for me. It was a brick of a card. I think the reality of playing this deck is that you're expecting that with Haven and with all of the fuel you have going on, you can spend three mana on more value than your opponent can get out of three mana. It really is mostly like a Robin Hood uh, counter. It can do things like Lyra Festival or a really buffed unit from Faunus, for example, but in probably over 80% of your games, your three mana is going to be better spent somewhere else. So lastly, we'll get into my uniques here. One reason I also don't like running the Lyra Chronicler is just this unique here. It's letting you put something into your reserve, which is an invaluable effect, obviously. Uh, it's supporting your Traced and Rossum counters. It's getting boosted by Haven when you play the next card out. And if you do so, which is already a beneficial thing for this deck, you get to discount something by one. So another way I like to look at the card when I'm planning my turns, it's two cost from hand, which would just be a better stat line than Geon with an extra effect. And then from reserve, it's even stronger than that. Comes out for effectively one cost. It's getting a boost. It's a good stat line. If you really can't find something to do with it, or you need a more desperate answer, you can just discard it to resupply. That can give you a scrap counter as well. It's an incredibly flexible card. I don't think I've ever had a game where it didn't do well for me. The unique in question when I refer to running maybe three rare salvagers is this unique Axiom Salvager. Again, right on the same line, it's doing a resupply for you and putting something into your reserve. This is a value machine. I've seen more removal spells and sabotages played on this than probably any other card, maybe the other than like Haven or Frankenstein. Um, it's a real commendment of this card that it's on that level of power and really like instills that much fear in an opponent that's never seen it before. Um, you know, Haven and Frankenstein are the bread and butter of this deck. Without those, at least, you know, some of those cards in your hand during the game, your win condition doesn't really come together. This guy poses a similar level of threat and really supports everything the deck does well. My last one here, we jokingly call it the fourth Haven. This card is a little bit polarizing, I think. Um, I grew to love it. At first when I was testing it, I didn't think it was that good. Um, it needs to be played with consideration. It does act as another Haven effect on your cards from reserve, but you need to be careful with how you're allowing your opponent to draw cards and also just weighing out the cost of this card. Um, I think a lot of Trace players are a bit too eager to set up like the nuts, so to speak, and just have like a ton of boosts going on. And then they don't have the mana to really follow through. I think that's an easy blunder to make and an easy hole to fall into. So I think this card is really powerful when played well, but you need a lot of experience in your matchups to know when it's safe to do so. Nice. Thanks so much for the deck profile. Yeah, this will be a fun one to try out. So, uh, yeah, congrats on doing so well today and, yeah, getting top 10 um, for your first event and, yeah, having just uh, started so recently. Yeah, I'm happy with my results. Um, even though I <laughs> fell just outside of top cut, uh, I didn't drop a game to anything that wasn't a Waru and Mac, which was entirely what I designed the deck for. I think if War and Mac falls just a little bit less out of favor, you know, we just had the Andres results and everything that maybe influence what we saw a bit today. Um, if the meta starts to kind of even out a little bit more, I think that Trace and Rossum can absolutely dominate the Swiss. Nice. Yeah, I hope that uh, we'll get a little bit more diversity. I think Top Cut was just two different heroes today, and then we did have Kojo and Trace coming in in like ninth and 10th, but 
yeah, hopefully we'll get a little bit more of those into the top cut for moving forward. Uh, any shout outs or anything that you want to do um, before we end this? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, big shout out to Gamers Guild Arizona. Um, I haven't really gone to many physical events before. It's a little bit of a new experience for me. I've played a lot online. This is by far the best facility I've ever seen. Um, if you're in the Phoenix metro area around Phoenix, even if it's like an hour drive, uh, it's super worth checking this place out. It's pretty next level. It's uh, the kind of thing that makes you want to live in an area. To be honest, if you're a big card game fan, man, this place is awesome. It's a huge facility. They've got this in-house restaurant and bar. It's just an absolutely, you know, luxurious experience. Um, shout out to Loki and Justin from Equinox who are there today. Really cool to meet some of the guys behind this cool game and talk to them and get to play some games with them. Um, obviously, shout out to my great friend Trickster. Uh, all my card game endeavors are, you know, have been supported and helped out by that guy. Uh, other than that, I don't think so. Nice. Hope to see you uh, back on the channel again soon and yeah, tearing up more events. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for uh, doing this event together and I look forward to more. Yeah, watch out for more deck profiles on the channel and thanks everyone for watching.